Hi, I wanted to show a new feature that's just been added to Illuminated Cloud 2. It's uh, it's another refactoring. Obviously, that was one of the main themes of Illuminated Cloud 2 is, uh, was refactoring along with things like real-time static code analysis. And this is one I think uh, that people have been waiting for for a while. It's it's a method extraction refactoring. And so let's just kind of take a look using a few key examples. Uh, we can begin just by uh, starting a method extraction refactoring and um, if you start with an expression you can either work with expressions or with uh, with basically statement blocks if you start with an expression just as with the variable and constant refactoring that are already there uh, it will prompt you for the exact expression that you want uh, assuming that there's an expression available uh, under or beside the cursor so we'll just go ahead and grab this entire uh, uh, string concatenation expression and it will prompt you to create the new method so we'll just call this get value and uh, the extract method dialog you know, features all the different things that you would want to uh, set in order to get the method signature correct. So, uh, you know, what should the visibility be? We'll go ahead and make this private. Uh, what should the return type be? Uh, if there are multiple potential return types, you would see those in the drop down. Uh, obviously, what the method should be named, whether it should be static or not. Um, there are limits on when it can be static. And if you make it static, as you can see here, by making it static, uh, this particular expression that I'm, I'm referencing uh, and trying to extract it it uses an instance variable and so it is saying that it would have to pass that as a parameter in order to be able to make this a static uh, method if i make it an instance method it would have immediate access to that so you can see it removes it from the parameter list and if it's uh if it's an instance method uh, you can make it virtual if you want and by making it virtual if you watch the visibility it will be escalated to something that makes sense in this case private and virtual don't make sense together because the whole point of virtual is to allow overriding and you can't override a private method so uh, we'll go ahead and pull this out as a virtual protected method. You can see in the signature preview as I make these changes, it's actually showing what the method signature will look like. And uh, if I move it back to static in this case, uh, it will turn off virtual, it will put the parameter back in, you can see this update. Uh, so let's turn that off, go back to virtual, and I'll say okay, and we get a method. And so we not only get a method, but it takes the expression that I selected and it swaps it out for the inv an invocation of that, uh, of that new method. And here we have it. And so now let's look at some more complex scenarios. So let's highlight the first two lines. We did an expression then. We'll highlight two, two statements. And in those two statements, we're using two instance variables. Notice username and repeat count. And so I'll extract that. And uh, in this case, it knows that it is trying to um, extract these statements for the purpose of uh, creating a variable called value. Uh, effectively, what it's done is it's looked at the highlighted region. It's looked at usages of things that are introduced within that highlighted region. It's realized there's exactly one uh, below, and that's value. And uh, so it has proposed the name get value based on that, because effectively you're wanting to create uh, and initialize this variable called value. And so we'll go ahead and do that. And uh, we'll go ahead and extract that method. And you can see that it extracted it. And these are now uh, referencing the instance variables. Now let's do that again, but let's make it a static. And so notice again, it will add the, uh, the instance variables as call parameters. And let's just change these to value and count. And so we're effectively aliasing those for more general purpose usage. Maybe we're gonna use this uh, multiple ways and it's not always gonna be based on a username. Uh, so we'll go ahead and extract this and it extracted it and it updated the references to those variables such that they now uh, they now use the actual call parameter names, the formal parameter names. So uh, it actually took care of that for us. And uh, let's once again extend our selection and take a look at what happens here. And one thing I wanna point out is not only are we using two instance variables, we are actually now using an instance method. And so, uh, while we can pass instance variables as call parameters, we can't pass uh, you know, instance methods um, in Apex. And so again, it infers that now what we want is this repeated username. That is the only output variable. So it's proposed that, but notice that there is no opportunity to select or deselect static. Um, you cannot make this method static because otherwise you would not be able to reference that repeat instance method. And so I can make it virtual, that's fine, but I can't make it static. And you can see that it is now gonna be an instance method. So it's gonna take care of that as well. It's effectively doing um, um, control flow analysis uh, to a limited extent uh, based upon the selected block to try to decide what should and should not be viable for the extracted method. And obviously things like what should the data type be? What are some candidate names? Things like that. Uh, just trying to take some of the, the onerous part out out of uh, slicing your code up uh, into small discrete pieces uh, based on you know ideally single areas of, of, of ownership. 
Okay, and so you can you can do this. Uh, you can extract methods from within other methods, both static and instance. And obviously, if you extract from a static method, you're automatically extracting a static method. Um, it also knows about um, things like if you're extracting an expression that you're using in a uh, an explicit uh, constructor invocation like a this or super, that has to be static. You can't call an instance method before you uh, you perform a constructor initialization, at least that initial part. Um, and so it will automatically prompt for that to be static. Um, you can um, also extract methods from uh, within property accessors. And so again, if we, uh, if we try to extract this method, there's no output variable here. This is effectively just setting the state of member property. So notice that uh, the data type, there's no type selector and the data type is automatically void, or I should say the return type of the method. And so I could just call this, you know, set member property um, and it would extract that. If I highlighted all three, notice the last statement is a return statement. We would want to retain that semantic. So we'll call this get member property. And um, notice that it retains the return statement uh, in order to, to effectively have the uh, outcome of the refactoring be, be valid code that represents the original intention. And um, it, it also takes a look, at, you know, I mentioned earlier some control flow analysis. It also takes a look at things like uh, are there more than one, is there more than one output? Uh, are there returns that do not match the type of the desired output? Things like this. For example, here, we're trying to extract uh, a method that will produce a variable called value, but notice that uh, we have intermediate logic that would return a, a, a value of type Boolean. So if I try to extract this, it basically says there are multiple output values. We're trying to return value, but they're intermediate return statements and, and, and they're not compatible. Uh, you know, similar if we go down to say this one and we're trying to uh, populate an S object and we're returning other types of S objects, but they're not compatible types. It effectively says we're trying to populate the, the variable called C, um, but there are intermediate return statements. So, it, you know, the whole point of refactoring is that you can take your code and you can change it to make it more maintainable, but without breaking it. And, uh, and it's trying to honor that contract as you are creating uh, effectively uh, these smaller units of work uh, that, that collaborate together to accomplish the same goal. Um, there are bound to be uh, bugs. This is a non-trivial exercise, and I encourage you, if you see something that uh, should be extractable and it's telling you it's not, or if it extracts and extracts into a broken state, log a bug, uh, ideally with a standalone reproducible example of it, and I'll certainly take care of it. Uh, there are a few additional features I plan to add here. The um, the most notable one is occurrences, meaning that if it detects other instances of the same pattern of uh, expressions or statements, um, that it will prompt you to replace those with invocations of the, the initial extracted method uh, when you extract the method. It's a little more complex than it is with extract variable because of the fact that you need to uh, find all the uh, the occurrences uh, and make sure that the right parameters, the expressions that will be used as parameters are passed as well. Um, and then the second one would be uh, uh, a little bit better uh, control flow analysis. You know, right now it is uh, it's doing a pretty good job, but there are situations in which you should be able to extract a method uh, when it'll tell you that you're not able to because of the intermediate return statements, uh, even though they are, are technically uh, assignable or compatible types. So I hope you find this useful. I hope it uh, helps significantly with your maintenance of your Apex code base and your Salesforce projects. And uh, I'm open to any feedback that you want to send. Thank you very much.